This video is sponsored by 2Animate, the best animation course out there. More on them later. Hey, and welcome to the third part of our big every note in Geometry Notes series. In this third part, we will look at the notes that are in the points menu and in the instances menu. Without further talking, let's hop into the newest Blender version. For this, we can go into the blender.org website and we can click on downloads here on the top and scroll all the way down and click on this little rocket here. And here you can download the newest 3.6 alpha. I already did this, so let's start Blender. Now, here we are in the newest Blender version and here we can delete everything and we can add back in and plane. Now we can drag our window here up and we can open geom the geometry nodes editor on it. Now I will close this window here by either collapsing it or pressing N, the N key and we want to create a new geometry node tree. Now in here we can add with shift A or here on the top left on the add, we can add nodes via the add menu. And here we have the point menu and the instances menu, which we will go over today. Now we can start with the point menu and here the first node I want to show you is the distribute points on faces node. We can click this and we can attach it to our noodle here. And you can see we have a bunch of points on our 3D viewport. Now this node places points on the surface of our object, which means on every face it will distribute points, so places points. But what are points? Points are just coordinates without further mesh data. So they are just coordinates with some attached attributes, but nothing more. And in cycles, they can be rendered as spheres. As you can see here, it's much quicker to render than actual geometry spheres and you can make great particle simulations with them because, because it's not really mesh data you're dealing with. In here you can choose how much points you want to distribute on your plane or on your mesh. You can also change the seat. But there's a second mode for this node. So we also have the poison disk. And so the random mode just distributes points randomly over your surface. But the poison disk also distributes points randomly, but you can choose a minimum distance that every point has to be to the next point. So we can type in here the density maximum of 100 or 500. And this is exactly the same as the random, but now we can make a distance minimum of 0.1 meters. And now every point has to be, has to be a minimum distance of 0.1 meters. And we can make this density even higher, but nothing really changes besides of that they are getting more accurate. And here we have also the density factor. That is a cool mix thing. So for instance, for the density factor, you can use a noise texture like this and maybe a color ramp to have a better control of this. Like this and maybe make it 0.5. And of course this isn't working because we have two less geometry. So let's grab a subdivide mesh node and let's subdivide this a little bit. And now we can define it a little bit better. So this is what the density factor is for. So this is a mask you can apply that says where your points should be and where your points should not be. 
And as for the random, you can of course do the same in the density, but you have to higher up this to your value that you had before, so 90. So let's plug in here 90. And you have to plug in the color, of course. Now this is working properly. And as I said, these can be rendered as point clouds in our geometry nodes editor. And to change the size of those, there is an extra node in the point submenu and it is the set point radius. You can plug it in here and here you can change the radius of your points and then you can change the minimum distance so they are more like this. And this is already looking pretty good. And I think we can move on with our next node, which will be the which will be the distribute points in volume node. For this, we can delete everything, maybe delete everything also in the viewport and we want to have a monkey, the Susan head. So with shift A in the viewport, just add a mesh and a monkey and we want to apply again our geometry nodes editor. Now in here we want to add our new node the distribute points in volume node but as you can see it's not really working by this i message here on the top and this means input geometry has unsupported type mesh so this doesn't work on meshes. This only works in volume how can we create volume? We can convert our mesh, convert our mesh to a volume. So in the mesh, then the operations, and here is the mesh to volume node. We can plug this in here, and now you can see something is happening. So we can look on here with the viewer, control and shift and click. So now we can look what our steps look like on here and you can see our monkey as has been converted to a volume now in here you can change the voxel amount and the density we want to have a little bit more voxels so it's it has better resolution and in here you can also change the interior bandwidth and if the volume should be filled and if not now we have our volume and in this volume we want to distribute points in three dimensional space. So we use the distribute points in volume node and now we can dial in the density how much you want and now you can see this is a three dimensional cloud in the volume of our monkey. And now you can also see if I check out the fill volume you can see it's only at the edges edges which will then be nearly exactly as i would use the distribute points on faces node so i check again fill volume and now it's back again now in our distribute points in volume node we have also two modes and the first is the random mode which, which places our points randomly in the volume of our mesh. And then we have the grid mode, which places points in a grid shape and fills with that our, our volume. Now in here, we can lower, lower this. And with that, we have more points because they have lower distance between them. And we can do this in every single axis. And with this, those two nodes should be, I think, relatively clear. And do you know what's also clear? The huge and amazing animation course from 2Animate, which you can find with the link in my description. And what can be clearer than a video that shows you what's that all about? Hey, ever wanted to animate something cool? Well, now's your chance. Join me and my loser brother on our adventures across the galaxy. <laughs>
Ugh. Come shoot some bad guys. Ride a hoverboard. <sighs> Learn to swing a sword. Whew. And become the artist you've always wanted to be. So what are you waiting for? Think of all those animations and all those stories stuck in your head. Well, we've made to animate to be a one-stop package to help you bring those ideas to life, no matter your experience level. Even if you're just starting out, don't worry. We've structured the lessons to help you navigate in Blender like a professional in no time. Once you've mastered the software, you'll learn the foundational elements of animation and how to streamline your workflow using the right tools. We'll guide you through the process of creating impactful animations from scratch and cover each step from brainstorming all the way to polish and render so that you gain a full understanding of the creative process. But moving a character is just one piece of the puzzle. How do you push your poses? How do you add texture and personality to your work? And last but not least, how do you combine it all to create a professional demo reel? In this course, you're not gonna find the typical copy what I do tutorials. We'll be exploring techniques and dissecting the principles of animation so you can feel comfortable creating any type of shot in any setting. Results will come naturally from your understanding of the art and will reflect your style and your personality. Now we know that learning a new skill and learning a new software isn't always smooth sailing and you might run into issues along the way. That's why you'll have access to our forum where we'll answer all your Blender related questions so you'll never get stuck. You'll also be introduced to our two anime community where you'll have a chance to meet like-minded people, discuss art, show off your work, and so much more. By the end of this course, you'll learn how to develop the right mindset to succeed in the industry and have a kick-ass demo reel to back it all up. So what do you say? Are you ready to animate? And now we can move on with the points note and this is a very simple note so we can look at it from the viewer this just at default adds one point here in the middle but we can make the point cloud larger maybe a point count of four but you can still only see one point here and this is because they are they have exactly the same position as you can see here so we can change the position depending on our index and you can of course also change the radius of them how can we see that we have four points for this we can go here in our spreadsheet and we want to see what the viewer node sees and here you can see we have points four points and they have all the same position so all those four points are here at the center but now we want to see our four points so we have to separate them for this we can use the index node and the index just gives we can look at it the index gives for every point so it just counts our points as you can see here so on our first point we have the number zero and on our second point we have the number of one because the index always starts with our zero so with this we can use the combine xyz node and use this on one of those axes and we can use it as the position and now we can see that we have separated our points because every point gets another indices and this defines how high it is going it is going on our z axis of course we can add more points now and they all get updated of course you can change this with a math node you can change with that the distance so if you want to have them really close then you can do this and we can delete this little dis construction here and now we can use the, our points to vertices node and this just converts our points to vertices which is a mesh so this should be pretty simple so if we now 
if we now apply our geometry nodes thing here, then these would be individual vertices that we can play around with in the edit mode like this. So let's go back. And this is a very simple node. So just converts our points to mesh data, which means vertices. We can delete that and go over to the next node, which is the points to volume node. This is also an interesting node. So if we lower here the spacing, maybe to point three again, we can also convert our points back to a volume. So every point gets a field of volume around it. And it looks like this. And we can take the radius maybe a little bit down so you can see something. So now every point has a field of volume around it. If we make the density higher, you can see what I mean. And yes, now we can, of course, do another thing, we can now go into the volume sub menu and we can convert our volume back to a mesh. And it looks like this then. And of course, we can update it here. So maybe point two. And this looks <laughs> very interesting. So now in here, we take our monkey and convert it to volume, then we place our volume grid our point grid in this volume, then we convert our points to a volume field. And then we convert our volume field to a mesh. Now, we can delete those two. I think they are pretty, they are understandable. So with this, we are ready with our little point sub menu in here. And we can move on with our instances menu. But what really are instances? So if we want to use here on every point, an sphere like, like an icosphere, our render would be very slow, depending on how much points we have would have. But if we would only have instances on those points, then cycles especially would be very fast because instances only duplicate the only duplicate the geometry but not the mesh data so you can see it in the viewport but it takes one time the mesh data of our object but then takes that one time data and only changes the position on our mesh data. So in here, in the instances, we can use the instance on points node. And we want to use for every point that we have created here, we want to use our icosphere. How can we do this? We can use the instances on points node. And here our points, we can plug them into the points. And we want to instance something. So the UV sphere should be placed for each point. And now it looks like this. Now, of course, we want to have it way smaller. So you can either take the radius from our icosphere down. Or you can take the scale in our instance node down like this. And now this is very performant even when we take the subdivision up to uh, six times. And we can even make way more points. So really weird blender crashed. So let's open it again. And <laughs> no problem. So we can create again a, a Susan monkey. And we can go back into our geometry nodes editor. And now where were we? We wanted to look in our at our instances on points node in here. So we have to create now we can create points on faces. It doesn't depend we only need points. And we can also instances our monkey again. So now we take our points here on the surface and replace for every point. We place 
our original monkey again. Isn't this cool? So here we can lower the scale and now this looks like like you did really work but you only had two points uh, two notes so easy peasy now you can use the rotation that comes out of the distribute points on faces node and plug this into the rotation so now every monkey is rotated properly like the points would and you can use that and another tip is you can use the random value node for the scale and you can take the max down to 0.1 so now every monkey has a random scale like this it's useful for when you make grass or nature like stuff and this is mostly what i want to show you for the instances on points node and we can move on with the instances to points node so here you can it's a node i never used but here you can convert your instances back to a point so i have no idea why you would use this it's the exact same as the distribute the output from the distribute points on faces node but hey you have it here so i never used it so let's delete it but i've told you what it is so now in here we have the realize instances node and this is a really important node because if you want to use the set position node and you want to change the the vertices of every single monkey in here for instance with a noise node and a mixing of linear light then with instances this doesn't work this only changes the core position of our instances because as i told you instances don't really have access to their mesh data it's just one-time mesh data distributed all across our scene with only t changing the core position so we can only change the core position so we have to make out of our instances real geometry again so that we can change the individual vertices of our monkeys for this we have to we have the realize instances node and we can plug it in here and now if we use our linear light you can see we can change the individual vertices of our meshes like this and you can get really crazy with this <laughs> like this and yes so this is a really important node and yes for making for turning your instances back to real geometry now we have also the rotate instances scale instances and translate instances those are three nodes which are pretty self-explanatory so the rotate instances node with that you can rotate the instances on their own in a local space or in an object space like this and you also have a pivot point so yes it's a pretty fun note so you can change the rotation of your instances depending on what you have so the scale node is pretty much the same so change the scaling on every individual monkey or as an or as an whole object like this and of course you have also the center here like this and translate instances is changing the position so with this you can change the individual position of your monkeys or as said as an object on its own and yes those are three notes which are pretty simple and i think i don't need more and the last two are also pretty simple 
this is a node which outputs you the rotation from your instances. I can tell you more about this. I never used this one. And this outputs you the scaling factor of how much your instances are scaled. And yes, let me know if you liked the third part of our big series and hopefully see you at the next part. Thank you all for watching, have a great weekend and, and see you hopefully again. Bye.